Today, I want to go over the draft from Game 1 of T1 vs Live Sandbox this morning in LCK. This draft from Sandbox shows how important it is to have a damage spread in your team comp, because it makes it infinitely easier for the enemy team to itemize against you. On the other side, T1 constructed a solid on theme composition that effectively theme counters what Sandbox want to do. Let's take a look. Also, 77% of you aren't subscribed. Hit that subscribe button, it really helps out the channel. T1 start with basic B1 Maokai, which is obviously good. The best overall champion in the game currently. Sandbox answer with Kai'Sa Tristana rotation, which is bad because they instantly kill each other's flex potential. However, the long range theme is good into the Maokai, so hopefully they continue along those lines later in the draft. T1 second rotate Zaya and Azir. This is an okay rotation. Yes, they're both on theme with scaling and anti-dive, wanting the enemy team to run into them, but Kai'Sa and Tristana don't have to do that. Zaya and Azir both hate playing against Poke and have very little, little counterplay to it. Assuming Sandbox continue with range and Poke themes, T1 will have a very difficult time this game. Sandbox finished first phase with Sejuani, which is fine. Good frontline and CC to create space for the marksman to deal damage. So, so far, through the first phase, both teams are pretty on theme with great scaling. However, Sandbox have the theme advantage thus far, as they heavily outrange T1 and don't have to dive into Zaya and Azir. Despite this theme counter, however, Sandbox will completely throw it away in second pick phase. They are for blind Leona, which makes absolutely no sense. You have established a theme of pokey range around objectives, not hard engage, so Leona doesn't fit a mold here. Also, this pick plays exactly into what T1 want. This will translate to Leona engaging into T1, and the rest of Sandbox not really be able to do anything. Leona is going to get picked a lot of round objectives this game, and put Sandbox in a really tough position come team fights. Anyways, T1 round out with Kaysante and Braum, a really good rotation. Obviously, Kayante is still super broken, so good pick. Still, it's a blind pick though, so it is punishable, but thank Faker it wasn't a Renekton pick. The Braum is really good into Leona, and counters both Dive and Poke very well. Just a good overall champion with multiple modes, which in this game will be more focused on protection and disengage. Sandbox R5 counter with Gwen into Kaysante, which is a fine lane matchup and will eventually scale enough to win in side lane, but again, Gwen is super short ranged and is having to run into Azir, Zaya, Maokai, and Braum. It's not going to look good for the three melees of Sandbox. I'm just confused because they established a long range poke theme with their first two picks and then completely 180 into Harv died teamfight. Doesn't make much sense, does it? Also, a big point for Sandbox's draft is their lack of damage spread. Tristana is the only AD threat on this team, so it makes it impossibly easy for T1 to itemize this game. Merc Tread stack, Banshees on Azir, Force of Nature on the tanks, Maw on Zaya. This is why damage spread is an important component of draft. You need to think about whether or not you make it easy for the enemy team to itemize. Overall, Sandbox's draft crumbled in second pick phase. They just lost all identity once they shifted away from playing around Kai'Sa in Trist range and scaling. T1 on the other hand actually drafted quite nicely, and it obviously helps when the enemy team drafts into your strengths. It's interesting how this team was showing garbage tier drafts while Faker was away, and now that he's back, they're pretty consistently constructing solid on-theme compositions. Maybe Faker really does do everything for this team. Thanks for watching, see you next time.